Howard Dean was at a health care town hall in Reston, Virginia with Representative James Moran. After opening remarks by both of them, they did a Q&A with the audience. He obviously wants to share a question with us, please, Mr. Toledo. Mr. Toledo, let's get a microphone so everyone can hear you. It's not fair to, uh, when you don't have a microphone and other people have. So please share your uh, thoughts with us. There's $200 million over 10 years in savings if we had tort reform, and nobody loses but the lawyers. Yeah. This bill has enough enemies, and as you know very well, because there's a fair number of them in this room, the more groups you take on, the more enemies you make, and we don't need any more for this bill right now. So, here is a, here is a reasonable solution, and also, I might add, if we did put our reform in the bill, my guess is we wouldn't get one single extra vote in the United States Senate or the United States House of Representatives. However, here's what I think ought to happen, I think is reasonable and fair to both both injured patients and also physicians and hospitals and so forth and so on. You cannot take away a right to somebody to do a jury trial. You can't. That's unconstitutional. It's not fair. However, what I think ought to happen, by the way, there's, this is going to be a hot one. Ready? I think comparative effectiveness research is going to be a great help in reforming tort. How about that? And I'll tell you why. Because comparative effectiveness research is ultimately going to study what works and what doesn't, and it is going to create a national standard of practice. And a national standard of practice is an absolute defense in the court of law. If you've done the things that you're supposed to have done, then you cannot be sued, and any reasonable judge is going to say that. Now, now, here's what I think ought to happen. I think if you have, a, if you have a, an action that you're going to bring against it, the medical practitioner, they ought to go to arbitration. You cannot make arbitration binding because if you do, you deny a jury trial. And then, so the it goes to arbitration. If the patient is unsatisfied and believes they have still not been treated fairly, the fair thing to do is to have a trial and allow the arbitration verdict to be submitted as evidence. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Toledo, because I noticed you gesturing and yelling, I, uh, I suspected you were not who you are. The fact is that you were, so I want to apologize for doubting that you were. Number one. That's number one. Number two, it's a very good question. It's a very appropriate question. Uh, and uh, it, it got an honest answer. 
That is the answer. That you know, politics is the art of compromise. It would have generated a great deal of opposition, not just from tort lawyers, but from other uh, 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 sectors. Uh, and there's one other which doesn't seem important, but in the scheme of things, it actually matters. And that is that the bill would have had to go through the Judiciary Committee as well. And the, and the Judiciary Committee, it would have politicized it all the more because that committee is perhaps the most partisan of all the committees. And the Judiciary Committee never would have reported out tort reform. So that's just a reality. I, I mean, I, the, both of us gave you an honest answer. Uh, but thank you for the question. It was a very good question. Uh, now, uh, Maureen, Maureen Mitchell? I thought we already asked Maureen Mitchell. We didn't. I thought we already asked you. Put two in. You're only going to get one. Uh, how about uh, William Berkson? William Berkson, sir. Just. Do you want your card? Uh, no, that's okay. Thank you. Um, I'm very concerned about the quality of the debate. You know, not only the, the screening of this representation, but also the fact that the press really doesn't seem to want to cover policy. You're right. You know, they want all of your friends covering the But I would also like to hear my Democrats, my beloved Democratic Party, also arguing some some ba some basic things. Number one, I don't understand why philosophically you don't say that the problem of health care cannot be solved by free enterprise. We're now we're now in a, a school that is supported by the state of Virginia. Many of the kids here at South Lakes High School couldn't go here if this were private. They just wouldn't have education. And the same is true for health care. The, the government has to be involved in this. Unlike those who say all government programs are bad, I know that some are good and some are bad, and you do too. And what I would like to know is why specifically, why specifically, this program is going to be a relatively good one as compared to options. I would really like to know, you know, how it's going to operate. What are the arguments for it operating this way rather than another? Thank you very much.